I'm just outside the small town of Cookstown, Northern Ireland, 50 miles to the west of Belfast. It's a quiet and peaceful rural scene, as you'd expect when you venture into the Irish countryside. But this weekend, that peace and quiet is going to be well and truly shattered. On any other day, these roads are used by normal traffic. As you can see, they're lined with walls, trees and hedges, all kinds of obstacles, road furniture, as they call it. But for the next two days, these roads will be closed for road racing, as 200 road racers push themselves and their machines to the absolute limit as they compete on this circuit. Mostly men, but also some incredible women. The week before a race, a minute before a race, it's the adrenaline, the buzz. It is like a drug. If you start worrying about getting hurt all the time, and where are you going with that? There's no point in doing that. You have to push on and prepare as best you can. It's on the same level, you know, your love, your friends, and the passion for the road racing. I'm happy that it's like that. By its very nature, road racing is an extremely dangerous motorsport, with riders reaching speeds here of 180 miles per hour. Morning. But it's also a sport full of tradition, with a strong family atmosphere. Never seen so many characters in one small space. Thank you, Hello. Hello. <laughs> nice to meet you. Pleasure, absolute pleasure. Wow, this is this is so friendly. It's incredible. You no, know, it actually it reminds me a little bit of um, when I used to go and watch British Superbikes about 25 years ago. Like, it's bringing back that overwhelming family feeling and just that feeling of a, a grassroots motorsport. There's not television cameras everywhere, and it's just very much racing at its basic level. This race, the Cookstown 100, is in its 95th year, and apart from the machinery, I doubt that it's changed very much over that time. But one thing has definitely changed since racing began here. In today's paddock, you can find some women road racers. I think Melissa's in here. Uh, what's that Hiya. Uh -huh. Here she is. Hello. Me. How are you? Melissa. Yep. Nice to meet you. You too. The first time I was ever on the bike, I kept falling off it, and I, I didn't, I couldn't work the gears, I couldn't work the clutch. I was like, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do this. But Dad kept at me, and <laughs> now look at me. <laughs> I'm still here, 14 years on. <laughs> what was the point then, where where you stopped thinking I don't want to do it, and you thought I only want to do this? Yeah, there uh, there has been times where, it's, where it's, it has been quite hard because I am in a man's sport, and. It's, for a girl, it's hard. I just think I'm immortal. <laughs> I just think that I'm not going to get hurt, that it's not going to happen to me. Um, and it's the fact that it's something I love so much and I, ca I can't get away from it, I really can't. Like, people that don't know me, I would say to them, like, oh, well, I race motorbikes and they look at me as if I have two heads. Just, it's just disbelief, I guess, because I am a girl, obviously, and the fact that I'm so small, too, draws attention. Um, my poor mum, bless her, like, I know she doesn't like, particularly like me doing it. She won't even watch me. She can't, she just can't bring herself to watch me, which I don't blame her. That's the way she copes with it. The vignette. You're Melissa's mum, and some may say that you've got the hardest job of all. It's hard. You know, my stomach is churning, and your heart's going as well. Um, before she goes out, and I'll always give her a hug and 
kiss her and say hello to her, and away off she goes. So, and then I just sit and wait, sit and wait, my fingers crossed. It's hard not to feel for Melissa's mum, to have brought a daughter into this world and then see her commit at such a young age to this sport that could take her away at any time. Lavinia may not want to be here, but she's here for Melissa. <laughs> I've worked in motorsport for 22 years and I think this is the most dangerous motorsport that I've ever seen and, and, and I'm sort of slightly polarised by it because it's incredible watching it and then the other part of me is like your mum, I'm absolutely terrified I know, you know yeah. for you being out yeah. there. I know it's not nice for her but when I come, like, when I come back in I am thoughtful of her, like having her here is probably the biggest support I have because everybody needs their mum. <laughs> that's, that's very true. I like, you know, road racing because maybe I'm too crazy for normal life. I don't know really, but I have the road racing in my heart and it's like, a, how I said, it's like a passion. So I need maybe that adrenaline and all the atmosphere or something like that. And, Everything and bikes is my life. I'm not too much thinking about the dangers. If something will happen, it will happen. And it could happen, you know, anywhere. You know, it couldn't be, you know, it can be only at the road racing, you know. For Veronica Henkosiova, taking part in Irish road racing is a huge commitment. I can see Veronica up there. Along with her fiancé and fellow racer Michael, or Indy as she calls him, she drives from her home in the Czech Republic just to race on these roads. Hi, I'm Hello. Susie. Yes. Michael's out there now, that's why you're here, is he? Is, is Michael on track now? Yeah, he's there now, you know, because he's on a 600 but doing a uh, thousand class on that bike, you know, so I'm just watching him. Okay. I have problem to watch the races, you yeah. know, it's so fast, you know, I can't believe that, but if I'm there, it's completely different. I always said to Indy that, ah, yeah, we have to go, just, you know, have a nice ride. It's not about racing, I have to say. It's about to have very nice, fast ride, safe as much as possible. Okay. Well, we'll be, we'll be watching you and, uh, and wishing you all the luck, of course. Yes. Have you seen him? Uh, is, he, is, he, is he back in, India? Yeah, I think he's not here. I have to go, I have to, go to the tent, we don't have to see him. Perfect. It's astonishing, isn't it? Everything that she said, really. And the fact that she's standing here and she's more nervous about waiting for her boyfriend to come in than she is than when she's actually out there racing. Um, I kind of understand that as well, a little bit. Yeah. It's quite a lot to take in. Fascinated by Veronica and Indy. A couple committed to each other, but also to competing in this sport. In fact, it is the danger of road racing that drew them even closer together. Six years ago, when Indy was badly injured here at the Cookstown 100. big crash in Cookstown. I broke my back, you know, many places. And after that, when I was lying in the hospital, I, I came out of the hospital and I asked her for if she will marry me. Because I realized afterwards, the life is too short. Now we are 10, 10 years together. We got engaged six years ago. And we never have a time to get the marriage done. Come on, Indy, yeah, come I on, know. sort it out. Yeah, we, 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 we spent all money on bikes, everything. So and traveling, it's traveling, a lot of traveling. You know. Veronica was telling me that she's a little bit nervous about going out on the 600 because it's... Yeah, she's, you know, going actually sort of a first year on the 600, yeah. really on the road. So that is going to be a big premiere for her. Of course, you know, she's getting used to the speed and, you know, and I'm getting more nervous than her, I think, you know. 
because you know when your partner is out there you know you know how tricky it is sometimes you know so i hope she's gonna do well and she's gonna enjoy she was saying exactly the same oh, thing yeah. about you while you were out there too i know my first love was horses and show jumping motorbikes just didn't figure at all um and then about 2004, I found myself on my own. That was basically the end of the marriage. And um, I've been married for 24 years. That's been a long time being with somebody all the time and all of a sudden you're on your own. And it's very daunting as well. But for me, it was the start of a new life. no doubt that Yvonne Montgomery is a road racer with a difference. It's not just that she's a woman, but a woman who began racing in such exceptional circumstances. From learning to ride a motorbike to actually racing was only a year. Do your licence and get a wee motorbike and have a bit of independence. So that's actually what I did do. I didn't go looking for motorbikes, I didn't go looking to start racing, it just all started to fall into place and I went along the road that it led me. And it led me to motorbike racing, road racing. And I have got such a good life now, I enjoy my life so much. It's a good time for me. Hi, has it been a birthday recently? No, yeah. there's a birthday at the end of up? August. That's it? coming up, is it? Okay. The last day of August. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 60. <laughs> it's a big one. Oh, well, sure. I don't know. It's, it's, just, just, it's just a number, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You're in this for racing. You love the racing. You oh, yeah. like overtaking. You're, you're, you're not I like just... like catching them and passing them. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what it's all, that's what racing's about, isn't it? To get past whatever's in front of you and... As soon as so when you're on that grid with your lid on, visor down, you're racing out there. Oh yeah. You're not yeah. just going out there to have a good time. Not, of course not. It's far too expensive. If you want to go out and just piddle around, there's other things you can do that's a lot less expensive and dangerous as, as racing. No, I'm out there to compete. Whatever I earn goes straight into the bike. You know, the girls talk about getting their nails done, their gel nails, it's twenty-five pounds, I think. That's a jerry can. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yvonne springing into action. I don't think that racing gets any more raw than this. You don't just see and hear it, you can also feel it. It's such an immersive and overwhelming experience. How are you doing? You good? What? You good? Yeah, good. Feeling good. 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 What Yvonne, Veronica and Melissa have in common, like all the racers here, is a total commitment to this sport. Their goal is the same, to go out, race as hard as they can, and beat some fellas along the way. They look like they're talking about the track and Indy's giving her some pointers on his experience from just being out there. I don't speak Czech, but I can tell by the body language. I was wondering whether she was visualizing the track before she went out there. so extraordinary standing here with them waiting to go out even though it's only for a practice but on a road on a country lane it, it feels so weird when you're there like she's sitting on her bike now waiting to go there must be so much going through your head oh, yeah, what, what, what are you thinking are you, are you visualizing the track how yeah, do you work? You are, you are trying to visualize how it was last year, how it I did, how shall I go this way. Not concentrate on cameras, not concentrate on anything, you know. Just be you. 100% focused on what yeah. you're going to do. Shut the gate, health and safety.
taking it easy. Yeah, she's taking it easy. <laughs> would be having kittens about me being here watching her in case something happens let alone being on there actually raising I can't really imagine how he's feeling it's clear to me that you can't take part in this sport if you don't love it it's too expensive it's too dangerous to just be some casual pastime but for Melissa like everyone else on the grid there's a price to pay for that love. I've just spoken to all of her family and they have a, a massive amount of pride and admiration, but they're all incredibly nervous for the unknown, really. This is racing how it used to be. A kind of racing in which the riders have to take on the road as well as their fellow competitors. And the rest of us will never know just how exhilarating that must be. Only the riders can know that. Look like she's got a good start. She's so tiny, you know, against guys that are two, twice the size of her and probably three times as strong as her. And there she is, away. Seventh pack. Leading that second pack. Seventh. She qualified ninth, so all good so far. I felt a little bit torn there because half of me just wanted her to come back and be safe and the other half knows how much she wants to do well and desperately wanted her to get a top 10 finish so a sort of competitive side of you and then there's the human side of you that just thinks just just come back anyway she's coming back hey hi how you doing Good. I think there's going to be a little huddle of people that are very happy to see you yeah, back here. I think so. <laughs> Blast them. Any more relaxed at all this weekend while the race was going on or normal? Well, just normal. Just a bit before she goes out, you know. But I'm relieved now it's finished and just back safe and sound. That's the main thing. Yep. Before I came here, people said to me, oh, road racing is mad. But I don't think the racers are mad. They're skillful and also measured and calculating. They have to be to put themselves on this grid, to make their lives work around the thing that they love. Because everything in their lives leads to this, to being here. They're addicted, they're obsessed, however you want to describe it, because they have to be here and they will do anything to get here. And for me, that's not madness, that's passion. That's making my heart bang so much. You can feel it, it's like thunder going through your body. Incredible, second wave. so extraordinary, such a physical sensation, to just stand by the roadside and watch, what must it feel like for riders like Veronica as they race between the hedges? It must, I guess, be some kind of euphoria. Well done. Ah, good. No. I thought you did really well. Bike is, you know, OK. I'm in one piece. That's the main thing, and, yeah, top, and a top days. ten finish yeah, to boot. Yeah, that's the job right there. Indy's out there now. Am I stopping yeah, you yeah. going to see him? Do you want yeah, to go and have yeah, a look? Yeah, I go there. Yeah. Definitely go there. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks no. a lot. Great. Must be hard leaving. 
cool as a cucumber, isn't she? I don't think I'd be able to speak if I just got off that bike. It's just amazing. They're, they're all incredible. In some ways, perhaps the most incredible of all is Yvonne. She's so warm and softly spoken, but a woman with such a strong can-do attitude. How would you describe yourself? Because there's, there's not many people that would start riding a bike at the age of 47, let alone <laughs> racing a bike at 47. <laughs> mm, I like to try things. And my, my whole thing is try it and see. If you don't like it, don't do it again. But if you do like it, look what you would have missed if you hadn't tried it in the first place. You know, don't limit yourself. Do it now, you know. Do it. Live every day and enjoy every day and plan for the future. And don't let your age stop you doing oh, Don't even think about your age. If you start thinking about your age, you sit and do nothing. You just have to. The only thing age does is it makes you more determined to get that done because in 10 years you mightn't have the opportunity. 10 years will be 70, I'll be racing then. I've spoken to a lot of people in this paddock that have retired, they've come back, they've semi-retired, they've come back, and they describe it as an, an addiction. God, is. it is. It is. It's absolutely an addiction. You can get treatment for every other addiction, but there's no treatment for motorbike racing. <laughs> Yvonne's addiction to racing is inspirational. To me, and I'm sure to many other women as well. We all want to do things and then talk ourselves out of them. But Yvonne talks herself into doing things. And she's not prepared to let any setbacks get her down. Not even an engine blowing up during the warm-up for her race. Do you know what? It's good to see that you're still smiling when you've put all this effort into coming and what track time have you had this weekend? About 15 minutes? That's life, you know, what about it? The, the bikes haven't given trouble. This is the first time actually I'd raced for about what, six years that I've had to pull in with engine failure. Oh, is that with right? The other bike, yeah, so it just, just happens. Can't wait to get home to get the the sump off that to see, what's, see, see many pieces fall out when you take the sump off. <laughs> She's still smiling and she's put all that effort into coming here. She goes out and she has a problem with the second bike. All that money she's put in and, and she just can't wait to fix the bike. Amazing. Being at a road race is like being on a knife edge. It's exciting and compelling. But you never quite escape the fear that something awful could happen at any moment. Maybe the racers get used to that or learn to filter it out. But they can't avoid it. It's a reality that Veronica has to confront once again as news reaches the paddock that her fiance, Indy, has had another heavy crash. I say there, no big, I say there. Craig on hospital, so I need to dress me up and just, you know, get his, you know, ID cards and these papers and go there just, you know, to be, to be sure what's going on. You OK? Yeah, yeah, I'm all right. Did, did you actually see him? Have you spoken to I him? Saw, yeah, I spoke with him and he was, he was, he was in a pain, so he was, he didn't so much realise, you know, the reality because he was on that, you know, uh, some, you know, morphine or something, you know, okay. so, so he was just talking something, you know, but he was completely, you know... Not talking any sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. no sense. Everybody is like, you know... Oh, what the... Oh, no, no, no. And I don't know nothing, no. they don't know nothing, and, you know, it's much worse for me because I need to be, you know, strong because of him, you know. I can't go there and just crying, you know, and see him, what's going on, it's no point, you know. So I have to be strong, and if I see he's all right, you know, that's the main thing. Yeah, yeah, give him our love. Yeah, and thanks a lot, Susie. <laughs> You're great. You're great. Okay, you get going, we'll hold you up. I will cry later, don't worry. <laughs> I thought Veronica was so strong walking back here, talking complete sense and being 
very matter of fact about everything. And I, w I wasn't expecting her to kind of hug me at the end, but she, you know, clearly needed a little bit of humanity to get her through uh, the next hour or so getting to the hospital. But I can't imagine what that must be like for her. And that's road racing. And they know that. They all know that in here. All these people get it. It's us on the outside that don't. But today, having spent the day here, I kind of get it a bit more now. As he returns from hospital, a badly shaken Indy faces a long and difficult journey home to the Czech Republic. But there seems little doubt that he and Veronica will soon be racing on the roads once again. Would you describe road racing as an addiction? What it is? For me? It's a very hard question just now because after all the troubles we had these two weekends, Maybe I'm a bit negative now, you know, but no. The road racing, it's like a passion for me and we are like a big family. Is it maybe about a feeling when you come to a race, do you sometimes feel right about it and then do you sometimes feel wrong? Do you sometimes yeah. feel hesitant about going out? Yeah, my very old friend, he's, he was the mechanic uh, in the 60s years and he said to me that the great racer is an old racer so and I now realize what he mean you know what he means with that most of your friends in this paddock now then there's a lot of friends in the paddock yeah it's just like a big extended family it really genuinely is like a big extended family it's like all your cousins and your friends that you have some christening or wedding or something, you see them all then. Well, this is like having this extended family every, every race meeting. There are sportsmen out there, but they don't face what you face. There are no. mo all motorsports dangerous. Yeah. You know, we're aware of that, but this is right on the line, isn't it? Everybody knows the drill. Like, it's understandable for people who are in this environment, but for people outside, they wouldn't get, they don't get it. They don't get it. What these women do, what all these racers do, is extreme. Because there is nothing more extreme than loving something that could cost you your life. But these are people who move mountains to do what they want to do. That's also extreme, and it is extraordinary. I've had such a great time here and I've learned so much and it's really been a privilege to meet the girls and just to see their dedication and determination to get their bikes out here and to race on roads. They're wired differently to me. I couldn't do it. I still don't know quite why they do it, but I have such a respect for them and I can't wait to come back to another road race. And there's more road racing next Monday night at 10.40 here on BBC One Northern Ireland with highlights from the Ulster Grand Prix. Next tonight, new tricks.